In this video, we're going to learn about the profit and loss statement. As always, I'm going to give a shout out to the Tennessee Council of Cooperatives and thank them for sponsoring this video series. I'm Dr. Justin Gardner with MTSU School of Agribusiness and AgriScience. Let's get rolling. The profit and loss statement is a summary of your revenue and expenses. Now, the thing you have to remember about that word summary, summarizing is what you do at the end when you're done. So what you do is you keep records. You write down when you sell something. You write down when you spend some money. If this were a full-blown accounting class, I would explain to you how a thing called a general ledger worked. That's where you write all this down. Now for our purposes, we don't need your general ledger. We just want to see the profit and loss statement because we want to know the summary. After you've done it, we want to know what you did we want to know how it went. That's what the profit and loss statement shows us. It's going to show us if you made a profit or if you made a loss. And the cool thing about a cooperative, when you make a profit, who does that profit belong to? That's right. The profit belongs to your patron. The profit belongs to your member. Sometimes we call the profit and loss statement an income statement because it should show if you have any income. And I've seen some textbooks and some accounting professors call it an operating statement because it summarizes your operations for the year. The profit and loss statement is a, is a, it's a pretty simple thing. Once, you've, uh, once you kind of get an idea of how it's laid out, it's basically organized in blocks. And the first block is going to be our sales, our, our revenue, what we brought in when we sold things. Again, these are all dollars, by the way, right? So this is not going to be a list of everything we sold. It's just a bullet point that says sales and the dollars that go with it, right? Again, it's not a list of everything we sold. It's the total dollar amount of everything we sold. And then after we write our sales down, we're going to systematically back out expenses in a way that is... Uh, common to these profit and loss statements so that anyone looking at one can be familiar with it, know how it's laid out, know what to look for. So the first thing you do is you list your revenue. That's block number one. You might have more than one sources of revenue. You might have sold more than one thing or more than one type of thing in your business and it might be useful to break it out into different categories. Not really, just one category sales. And the second block is on this slide right here. That's your cost of goods sold. We mentioned this before. Your cost of goods sold is going to be the amount of money your inventory was worth on the first day when you started the accounting cycle, the accounting period, the year. And then you're going to subtract the value of your ending inventory here when you start filling out your forms at the end of your accounting cycle, your year, whatever your accounting period is and you're going to add back into it your purchases. Now purchases aren't the same thing as expenses. Purchases, that's where you bought things in order to put them in inventory so you can turn around and sell them later. Uh, this is kind of set up for a retail store. That's the way to think about it. A retail store is going to buy product, put it on the shelf, people are going to walk in, pick it up, and hopefully pay and walk out. Uh, so that's what the purchases comes from. So this is the first block. The first thing you do uh, when you start listing your expenses is figure out how much money you have invested into the items that you sold. That's your cost of goods sold. So block one revenue, block two calculate your cost of goods sold. The next block in our big tower of blocks that we're building here is the gross margin. That's real straightforward. We're going to take our revenue from our sales, the money we brought in, and we're going to back out the cost of goods sold that we just calculated in the previous block and that's going to give us the gross margin. Sometimes we might simply see this called our margin. The next thing that we do is we build a complete list of our operating expenses. So working our way downward in our, in our tower of blocks, we're going to have a complete comprehensive list of all our expenses. Whoa, hang on, a complete list? Okay, we're not actually listing all of our expenses. We've listed all of our expenses in some other set of documents, our general ledger, and here we're just picking out what's the total from all those various categories. So in other videos I've given you categories of expenses, we're going to list all the categories. So we're not going to list every electric bill, they're just going to be a utility expense and we'll list our total amount of money we spent on electricity, phone, all that kind of stuff in utilities. 
and we're going to total them all up. Remember, these are dollars we're listing, right? We're going to list a category. We're going to put the dollars we put into that category. We're going to add them up at the bottom. The next category is income before taxes. Uh, we sometimes call it net income before taxes. That's just our gross margin minus the operating expenses that we just calculated. Now, we're dealing with a cooperative here, so you're not going to need to pay any taxes in your, in, your, in your cooperative because cooperatives don't have to worry about that double tax. So that's some good news for you. The next category, the next block is our net income. So then we're going to take our net income and we're going to calculate it by taking the last block, the income before taxes, backing the taxes out, and then we're left with the net income. If you're running a sole proprietorship, the net income, that's what you take home. It's what you get to spend on your family, right? That's the goal is to have a nice, big, healthy net income. For our cooperative, when we get to the bottom, we get our net income. That's the money that belongs to our patrons. That's what we work so hard to do for our patrons. And that's a good place to end because at the end of the day, you've got to work hard to do good things for your patrons. And this net income right here, that's the good thing. Now, I'm going to be putting up some spreadsheets, uh, some Microsoft Excel spreadsheets that show some of these things in greater detail. So you stay tuned for those. They're coming down the pipeline. Thank you very much for watching.